We can also make more complicated circuits by looking at resistors in parallel. So if we want to draw the circuit, again, let's see, battery. And then we're going to have one resistor here, R1, in a simple loop, and then have it split and go to the other resistor here, R2, like that. So this is what we call parallel. Let's see. So same thing. We have an EMF here. It sends out a current I. Power supply is not sentient. It doesn't know what's there. It only feels it. So all it knows to do is to send a current according to some effective resistance, just like before. Okay. Now, here it's sort of the opposite. Here we know if this is at E volts and this is at zero volts, this is a wire, and this is at E volts, E volts, E volts. Here we're still at E volts when it splits. And even after it splits, we're still at E volts in terms of potential. Until you get to the top of those resistors, you're still at E volts. And down here you're at zero, and this is a perfectly good wire. So you're at zero, and you're at zero, and you're at zero here, you're at zero here. You're at zero all the way on that side of the circuit. So what we see here is that the EMF drop from the battery, the, or the, the, the EMF supplied by the battery, drops across each resistor. So we see that the voltage drops are the same. And what that means is that E equals delta V1 equals delta V2. Okay. But now the current is different. The current, we imagine current is the flow of charge. Charge is conserved, right? So the charge will split. And the current will split. You'll get I2 uh, will go that way. I1 will go this way. So the charge splits at that point, and it comes back together to make I of current again. But since charge is conserved, it has to sum. You can't lose any of your charge, so the current sums, meaning that I equals I1 plus I2. Okay. So now, what we want to do is try to combine these again in a way that we can figure out what R effective is. All right. So let's look. We're going to use um, this equation. So the EMF we know is, I'm sorry, we're going, to use, um, we're going to use this equation. We're going to substitute in for these currents. So this we know is the EMF over R effective. So E over R effective. And then I1, what is I1? Well, we know the voltage drop is delta V over R1 is I1, so you just use V equals IR. So I1 is delta V1 over R1. But we already talked about delta V1 is just the EMF. So if you just look at R1, what? It's got an EMF across it of E, and it's got I1 going through it, and there's R1, so that's that part. I2, same argument. It's just the EMF over R2. Here's I2. It's what's flowing through R2. The EMF is E. So there you go. So when you look at that equation, you can see, just cancel the EMFs. And this is how they add. 1 over the effective resistance is 1 over R1 plus 1 over R2. So they add as reciprocals like that. So this is an interesting case. This is a case where when you add more resistors, the effective resistance goes down. Right? It's the opposite of when they're in series. And if that actually makes sense, because you're basically giving the circuit more and more places to send the current. As you add more resistors in parallel, in terms of what this thing sees, it sees a lower resistance. So those are the two fundamental ways to add resistors. Now we can look at more complicated circuits and how to add those effects together.